Hi, Steven. So good to see you. Hello, hello. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I love this. So it's funny how we're doing this during this COVID situation, but I feel so grateful for your time. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so I'll start by how I found you guys. So Stephen, you own a rehabilitation, physical therapy slash Pilates gyrokinesis business. Correct. And I found you guys, let's see, um, we first moved to Austin maybe 13 years ago. Can you imagine? It's been a while. <laughs> Your name showed up uh, three times over the first three years that I lived here because I had a really bad back, right? And I was desperately looking for a good physical therapist. And your name came up from totally unrelated people. And I was like, oh my God, I clearly, I guess I need to see this guy. And I had all kinds of story around like, oh, I don't know if I can get in. I don't know if I can afford it. I was still traveling back and forth to New York. I didn't have a full-time career job here. I was still doing hair in Manhattan. And I'll never forget the last person that brought your name up was a woman that I've known for a really long time. And she said, you have to go to him. You need to think of it like I get up, I brush my teeth, I must eat. That's how you need to look at this guy. I was Absolutely. like, okay, I never really thought of it like that, but I hear you. So tell me, you and I have talked a ton over the years because I've been a patient off and on and a client in your classes, right, with you and Cheryl for probably mm, solid 10 years, maybe 11 now. And tell me a little bit about your story. How did you get into physical therapy? Like, what was your path? That's a great question. You know, um, my, my path for physical therapy came about from almost a process of elimination of other things. I, um, I knew science and math were, were easy for me. So I, I made straight A's in science and math, but I struggled in like history and English and things yeah. like that. So I knew my path was in the sciences as far as when it came to college. And I knew I could make the grades that I needed to make to, to do whatever I wanted to do. But I also had a brother that was four years older than me that was in medical school. So when I was in uh, college, he was when I, my freshman year of college was his freshman year of medical school, or first year of medical school. And I watched what he was going through in medical school, and I realized real quick, nope, that is not. <laughs> I, am, I am not doing that. Even though everything I was kind of preparing for was a pre-med um, education because then I could go into any type of medical field I wanted to go into and the requirements were pretty similar. So I really didn't know. I, I thought about medicine. I thought about dental school a lot. Medicine got nixed quick. Then I went and thought about dental school. I thought about um, uh, pharmacy school and things like that. And it's interesting because pharmacy, I was like, <laughs> it's so funny. I was like, I don't want to go to pharmacy school because where I'm from, a lot of people are going to be coming to me asking me for some drugs. Yeah, and totally. <laughs> I'm serious. And the opioid epidemic that has happened since, I am so glad I didn't end up as a pharmacist. Oh my gosh, it would have just been hard to watch. Yeah. Um, dentistry, you know, I'm a big guy with big hands and the thought of working in someone's mouth, I just slowly started kind of Xing things off. And well, one of my so funny. I love that you acknowledge the process of elimination. I feel like I talk to so many clients and parents that watch their kids struggle towards the end of high school and they get so nervous towards the end of college about what am I going to do with my life? And I keep saying at 49, I tell everybody, look, I didn't know what I wanted to do till I understood what I didn't want to do. And then that helped right. me find what I wanted to do. That's like, right. Who the hell really, pardon my French, knows what they want to do? Like, you don't have enough experience under your belt. So totally. you have to kind of say, well, this is definitely what I don't want to find definitely. out what you might want. And I as I kept Xing those off, my, my list kept getting smaller. And actually, physical therapy wasn't even on the list because uh, I didn't know anything about it. I'd never had it. I'd never been injured in a way that needed it. Um, and then I was an umpire um, all through college, all through high school. Uh, for Little League Baseball. And one one game I was umpiring and I found out from that one of the coach's wife was a physical therapist. 
and she was really cute and everyone liked her and she was just a sweet sweet lady and her kids were probably like 12 13 at the time and her husband was a coach and I just went up to her and started asking her questions about physical therapy because I'd, I'd been hearing about it in my classes from people that were interested in it but I didn't know much about it and she just said Stephen why don't you come into my office this was the summer you know we were I would umpire in the afternoons every day um, from like four into the evening so she goes why don't you start uh, come up by the office one day and just hang out for the day if you want to go to PT school you have to work at a place like mine or you have to volunteer at a place like mine so if you're interested you got to do this anyway so why don't you just come hang out for a day and at the end of the day we'll talk about it and see what you think and I was like, okay, cool. You know, I had no idea what, what, okay, what to, yeah, I had no expectations. I knew nothing about it. And I went in there and it was her and this guy, Greg, her name is Susan. And Greg was younger than her. She was a little bit older, but uh, not, she wasn't by no means old, but she was, you know, yeah. I was, I was young at the time. Totally. Uh, I was, I was pretty young. And so I was maybe 18 at the time. And so she said, um, so I'm watching, I'm hanging out. I see her interacting. I see Greg interacting with her clients. I see this like community of people that like, they loved being there. They loved that hour they were there. It was a party for them, even though they were injured and things were happening. There was this community feel that like, like everyone looked forward to going to Greg and Susan's place, even though they were in pain. And I just watched for that one day and I was like, what is this? Yeah, totally. You're like, something's oh, happening oh, here. I don't know if I could really explain it, but I like it. I, exactly. And, and, and it was more the community feel than anything. And I didn't understand it at the time, but looking back on it, that's what it was. Yeah. And, and so then I showed up the next day and then I showed up the next day and then I just kept showing up and I was basically shadowing them. And it's something that's required to get into PT school. And then after about a three weeks or so, a month, I don't remember exactly, she says, hey, let's, why don't we just hire you and, and you become a tech, a technician. And it was terrible pay. It was like $4, $5 an hour. Totally. But it got me into this place where now I was making a little bit of money and I got a little more responsibilities. When I was a shadow, a student shadow, or I couldn't really do much. I just observed. Now yeah. I started being a part of the plan. I started teaching people exercises. I started doing ultrasounds. I started setting people up on heat and you know, asking them questions about how they responded to last week. And all of a sudden I was thrown into it in a different way. And I was like, this is really, really cool. And that was it. I worked for her for the summer and, and I say her and both Greg and Susan. And, and I, was, I was like, all right, I'm all in on this. And that was, that became my mission. And I, I, I'm guessing I was maybe 19. So I was probably two years, I was young going into college. I was 17 when I started college. So it was probably my second year of college before I figured out what I really wanted to do. Yeah. And I'd even taken a whole semester of like accounting and, and economics and mm -hmm. business in there just because I was like, do I really want to take science? And that yeah. was the worst grade I'd ever made in my life was that semester. Like accounting was <laughs> the worst grade I'd ever made. I made a better grade in organic chemistry than I did in accounting. <laughs> and so it just kind of, I, I really quick, quickly went back to science and math and, and kind of found my niche. But what was interesting at the time, and it may still be the case, physical therapy was very, very competitive. And in Louisiana, there was only 64 spots a year and there were over a thousand applicants. And so it was like, all I really heard was, you're never going to get in. That's what I heard. When I told people I'm going to go to PT school, it was like, mm -mm, no, it's, <laughs> it's too competitive. You're not going to get in. What's your, what's your uh, backup plan? And I just said, well, my backup plan is to be number 42 out of 64. So, or number 29, I don't really care what number, I'll be number 64, I don't care what number, but I'm gonna be one of those numbers. And that was my mindset um, whenever, and that's when I learned really early on about like life that people try to hold you back from your dreams. And I learned to stop telling people things. And then um, I got into PT school. I love that, wait, I have to say, I love that. You wanna know why? So my whole life, I was told in high school, I did two years in college, I was told that I didn't apply myself enough and I was kind of lazy. And so what's funny now is, I think I have a lot to learn still, but what I've come to understand is at certain spots in your life, things resonate a little bit more, right? For when sure. That person or kid or child or young adult, wherever you are in your process, when you find your zone, man, it's like you're in your flow. And That's right. I love that because I think we sometimes can prescribe things to people or other adults or a story 
that we think is ours, how we're viewing something or someone else. And it's totally not true for that person. I hated math. I hated it. I love geometry. Kind of makes sense. I love shape. I love perspective. Right. Okay. Science hated it. History loved it. But I was told I was lazy. If I would only apply myself, if I would only try harder. Well, it's because I didn't want to be a lawyer or a doctor. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I didn't want to go that direction. I was total creative this side. And when I found fine art, it was like, whoa, my whole world opened up. Right. Totally. I love that you said that. And, and, and that was kind of an interesting point because that's a great point because I learned this also about business. When I started talking about business with people, mm-hmm. I got the same response. Ah, oh, man, you can't do that. You can't do that. And so that's why you and I Great got along. In that so way. Well. You're so good in that way. Yeah. And that's why we got along so well is because we encouraged each other in our business building and what we were doing instead of like holding each other down. But like I stopped talking to like my best friends, a lot of my family about anything I was doing that was entrepreneurial because they didn't understand it. They weren't entrepreneurs mm-hmm. and they thought I was crazy. And so I learned that at an early age when I was about 19 people are going to hold you back from me probably earlier than that, but it came through at that age that people are going to hold you back by me saying, I'm going to get into PT school. And they're like, nah, you know, think of something else. And I got in and, and I got into my second try. My first try, I didn't get in. Um, but the second time I did. And when I got an interview, I knew once I got an interview, I was in, I knew I could talk yeah. my way into it. Oh yeah. 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 The personality paper, comes through. On paper, paper I, wasn't, I wasn't very, you know, there was, there were definitely better qu- uh, candidates on paper. Um, but when I got in to talk to him, I knew I was in and, and that was the, and, and I, again, I was just confident and, and, and I, and real quick story about my interview, the guy when he sees it, I went to a certain school in a small town in Louisiana. He goes, I went to school there. Is the Brown door still there? And he asked me about a bar I and, love and I'm like, well, yeah, the, Louisiana, I love it. The, yeah. The Brown door is there. Chemistry. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. We are spirits of another mother. So, and so I told him two of my best friends were, were running the brown door and thank goodness it only reopened about six months ago or I may not be sitting here because I'm not sure my grades would have been as good. And he cracked up laughing. And then that was my, that person. I talked to him for the rest of the interview. Everyone else, I was like, back to you and let's talk about a bar. But, uh, but anyway, so that was kind of the journey to PT school. I got in, everything worked. Um, And then I got out of PT school and 10 weeks after I got out, I got laid off. My very first job, I worked for 10 weeks and I got laid off because of a bill that was passed by the government. It had nothing to do with me, had nothing to do with anything other than they put a cap on what Medicare would pay for physical therapy. Uh, So I had, to be honest with you, I didn't even know they were even talking about it. I was a young kid getting out of school, trying to pass my boards. I I wasn't paying attention to politics at all. And I lost my job 10 weeks later because of literally one stinking signature that happened on a Monday. I lost my job on Tuesday. It was that quick. And so I was like, whoa, I just spent eight years of my life learning to be a PT and now I can't do it. And it took me. And so this is weird. This whole quarantine is like, it's, it's, it's kind of reminds me of back in 1998 in a little different yeah. capacity yeah. though. Um, but right. I was going, I can't believe I can't work and do my job when I've spent so much time and effort learning this. Well, it took me eight months. It took me eight whole months to find a job. And I had to move to California from New Orleans to find that job. And it was terrible pay because the market had crashed for PT market. Um, But it was what I could have and it's what I could do. And so I moved to LA, worked for about two years in a terrible job, worked in another terrible job for five extra dollars an hour and for four months. And then I opened my own business and I've just been doing it on my own since because I could no longer, I could no longer be told what to do by someone else. And the system had already like the system had already broke me that 10 weeks later, like, boom, you're out, you're out of a job. Yeah. And then after having two and a half years of crappy jobs where I'm literally making no money in an area of town of, of an LA where it's very expensive, um, that I had to do something different. And I just started reading books. I started reading on, um, I read a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad uh, by Robert Kiyosaki. And it's all about mm-hmm. mindset on how you think about money and how you um, look at money and why you should own a business instead of working for somebody. And by the time I finished reading that book, I'd already opened my own corporation. I'd already started, you know, setting up contract work in LA. And I got the heck out of my W2 life and created my own path. 
and did it, did that in LA for a couple of years. Um, and then Cheryl and I, Cheryl and I were dating at the time. And this goes back to your three, uh, three earlier. We, um, I was exposed to the word Pilates three times before I realized that that was going to change my life. Isn't it funny um, that something repeatedly shows up and you're either yeah. going to like ignore it or yeah. it's just going to keep coming. And that's, right. that's what I, that's what resonates so much. And I think a lot, I don't know how many people get to know this about you, but what I love is because we do talk a lot about business and we do talk a lot about what we're doing. And in the very beginning, when I had my very small salon, you were the one of the first people that was like, sure, let's do that networking thing. Awesome. Yeah. I love it. And I was a little too new in my business to like really sustain something. But what I love is you and I resonate on a certain level where we do share similar ideas. And I love how I've been able to watch you evolve, right? That's the biggest thing. I, like you're so unique. I've done a lot of physical therapy, just a disclaimer, from New York to Palm Beach to Louisiana to Texas. And you guys were the first ones to make a very large global connection in a healing process for me that was about several things, right? How, how are you connecting it in your body? I'm going to show you how to do it yourself. This is what you need to do to maintain it. And we're not going to do the standard like, okay, walk this up the wall or, mm -hmm. you know, hear your leg lifts or... It's, it's a very unique approach to physical therapy. And we can get to that in a minute, but I just had to say that because it is the awareness to see when something keeps showing up and how it's showing up. Just like this COVID situation, it's like, what are we all seeing and hearing? How are we going to look at our story and our brand, our personal life, our family lives, our professional lives, and make a little bit of a difference or take the chance to make the leap of something that we've wanted to do to shift it, right? So right. I just like, th this is where you and I really resonate, seriously. Like I, I, I enjoy it so much. So it showed up three times. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no worries. And so what happened was I was applying for a job because I had a registry business at, or a contract business at the time. So I was working all over LA, just this company, that company. I was filling in for people while they were on vacation, on maternity leave, or they would just call me in the morning and say, hey, someone called in sick. Can you show up at the Burbank office? Yes. So I was a, I had my own contract business and I didn't work as a W-2 for anyone, but I worked for three or four companies in multiple locations. Well, through doing that, I was applying for, I would go out of town to snowboard up in Lake Tahoe and I'd hand out my resume and say, Hey, if you want me to come up here and work for a month, you want me to work for a week, you want to go out of town, I'm your guy. Well, some got, somebody called me and he goes, Hey, do you have any Pilates experience? And I'm like, I don't, even know, I don't even know what that word is, man. Sorry. And he very politely hung up on me. Okay. Thank you. Clunk. And I was like, whoa. And so I went to Cheryl and I was like, Cheryl, what is Pilates? You ever heard of that word? And she goes, oh, it's a type of exercise. Uh, at my gym, they, te they do something called Pilates mat work. I've taken a few classes and she kind of told me what she knew about it. She didn't know a lot, but she had taken, she, she knew more than I did. And that was, that was number one. And then about two weeks, three weeks later, I was, um, Cheryl and I were training for a marathon. And so we were doing these long, uh, these long trainings uh, over in Santa Monica. And I stopped in this restaurant to, to go to the bathroom midway through our big, long training. And as soon as I came out of the restaurant, boom, there it was, physical therapy, Pilates. And it was the first time I saw the word gyrotonic, which came into our world later. And I was like, huh, there it is again. And I again, I went on my day and kind of put it out of, out of sight. And then about two weeks, three weeks later, so this happened to me all within, I think about a month, month and a half. I'm looking through the New York, I'm sorry, the LA Times, and I'm looking for more contract work because this was... 2002 you know we internet was around but not the same as it is now yeah and I'm looking in the la times and there there's that same dang place that i walked out and peeked in the windows of and it says looking for physical therapist pilates experience a plus well the last guy hung up on me because i didn't know what it was <laughs> now now i knew a little bit of what it was and this was my third like slap in the face two of them from the same place 
so I called him up, went, went and interviewed with him, got the job pretty, it was like, I was, they're like, when can you start? I'm like, I can start tomorrow. Like I, I'm a contractor. I can, I'm, I, I got, I, as soon as I'm available. No time like the present. <laughs> let's do it. So I set up a scenario with them where I went to their, them twice a week, like Tuesdays and Fridays, because it was in Santa Monica. It was long. It was only six miles, but it was a hard six oh. miles for me to get there. It was, you might it was well be hard. trying to get to Topeka, Kansas from LA. It, it was an hour. It was an hour, and I got there at six in the morning, and it was still an hour. But anyway, so I worked there for about eight months, and within that first week or two, I really was like, this is cool. I like this. There's something to this. And I started a Pilates certification program, and I asked Cheryl. Cheryl said, if you're doing it, I'm doing it with you. I love and it. That's how she got in, and I asked the girl who I was signed up with. I was like, hey, can, can my girlfriend come do this training with me? She's like, sure, of course. And that's kind of how we started our world together because she was basically a paralegal, uh, doing paralegal work uh, at Universal Studios. I yeah. didn't know that. Oh my yeah. God. She worked in the law department of Universal Studios, basically writing out letters, firing people. Like here's a, here's a million bucks, but your services are no longer required. And so that's what she did for a few years. And then we went through our training together. And as soon as we did our training together, I stopped driving back and forth to Santa Monica and I went to one of the companies that I worked, uh, did a contract job with. And I said, let me have that little space in the back room where you got a TV and some file cabinets and let me buy a reformer and let me put a reformer in there and let me start building a, a, a Pilates program. And I'll work here during the day. My wife will work in the, during the, um, lunch and then the end of the day, at the end of the day and on the weekends and we'll work out a profit sharing deal. And the guy was like, Sure. And that was it. That was the start of our business. And we went to him and for every dollar we generated for him, we got a percentage of that dollar as well as we got paid our, our, our normal fees for the like per hour working. And that's when we realized that people liked what we did. And Pilates really taught me to look at the body holistically instead of just the way I learned PT, where I was very like focused on one joint. Oh, the shoulder is the shoulder. Yeah. So that, okay. So slow that down. Cause yeah. I, that's, would you say that's your primary unique point of difference? Yeah. Cause I, I like, if someone has a shoulder problem, they probably have a hip problem that's contributing or okay. if someone has a, so, I just, I have to say this again, this is the unique point of difference. You go to a lot, there are many good people in many different industries, right? There are a lot of good hairdressers. There are a lot of good physical therapists. What resonated for me personally is you were the first person that said, okay, I totally understand that you have two blown discs, one in your neck, one in your lumbar. Here's what we need to look at. We need to look at your psoas. We need to look at your hip balance. We need to look at your leg length. And then you showed different movement that connected it all together for me. That was mind blowing. So, mind -blowing. so let me tell you something interesting. In the PT field, what I do is considered voodoo. <laughs> for There's real? How? It's so, it's like, I can't look at someone and only suggest a haircut without thinking about their color and the texture and how does it apply to her routine at home and does it really work for her? Because if it doesn't really work for her, then I need to think of something else because yes, you wanna think of the shape this way, this way, this way for her, but like if it's not applicable, what is it doing? Nothing. That's right. That That's right. floors me, floors me. And so the whole alignment in the leg length discrepancy the research says that that doesn't exist and that someone can have an inch longer leg and that has nothing to do with their back pain. And for 22 years, I'm going to have to call that, that crap. But the research, the kids coming out of school, what they're force fed, there's a reason PTs as a whole aren't that good anymore. It's because of what they're being force fed in school. They, there's a reductionism. It's like reduce, 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 reduce to the smallest thing. Well, that gets us down to the leaf on the tree. Well, Pilates taught me to step back and look at the whole dang tree. And if we address the whole tree, a lot of times we don't have to look at the leaves on the tree. That's the whole thing. And so everything I do- the Leaves like, cannot function without the roots, which is way below ground. That's and right. And you can see that. That's exactly so right. That's, that's it. you were the first person as we worked together, when you were speaking to me, you were like bringing up all these points. And I was like, 
but my back hurts, but my back hurts. And you were so freaking patient, I will say, because I'm a little obstinate sometimes. No need to chime in on that. <laughs> but you gave me literally months of gentle coaching where you kept saying, look, I totally get it. Just have a little faith. And if you don't feel better, we'll reevaluate. But I couldn't deny that each time I freaking felt better. So I just had to like let go a little bit. And it made sense to you, right? It totally made sense. So I'd rather make sense to you, the client, than the other PT. I don't care what the other PT thinks about me. I don't care. Yeah, well, because it's either going to resonate or it isn't. Mm. Exactly. And, and that's what we were taught in school, to have egos and to think we're better than our client. And I am in a relationship business with my client. I am not better than my client at all. I'm just the guy that's going to help guide them to what they need to get better. Yeah. And it is not an easy process for many people. It's a long process. You know and what? I think it's not an easy process because on a very high level, what you're actually talking to people about is a deeper look, a deeper look at many things. So I think initially you talk about mechanics, physical portion, but then the minute you start getting to that psoas, which is like everything for me yeah. that you yeah. taught me, so then things. you start gently speaking to how the emotional and cortisol and internal portion is affecting the mechanics which affects certain things in the body right so it's like all of a sudden you start here but then you're going way back like this and that can get a little uncomfortable sometimes because i watched it with my mom you did it with an 83 year old woman who has never done anything to pay attention to her body she blew her disc in her neck crying in pain it was horrible to watch and i knew immediately what was going on even in the er i was like okay sweet jesus don't let it be a tumor but i know this is her disc right Right. The minute you started talking about like emotion and like, well, you know, it's all just how you hold it. And, oh, that's a little like, well. <laughs> and and there's, some, there's some of the, the woo-woo stuff that is not as frowned upon in my profession. Because I'm, we were taught that if someone wants, if, there, if, there's, if it's not musculoskeletal and it's emotional or if it's something else, then they need to see somebody else. Well, I believe in holistic treatment and that, the mind, the body, the spirit, they're all tied together. Now, I scare a lot of people off with some of my woo-woo stuff pretty quickly, and that's fine. I don't, I don't, that, I, that, go on. I want the I people that. To... Not everybody's ready for the message okay. when it shows up. So that's sometimes right. people have to, like, go away and live a little, and then if it's right, they'll come back. Like, that's I firmly right. believe in that. That's right. So that's really kind of the process, and the Pilates taught me that. And then I started studying with a, a, a PT, a guy named John Barnes, who created the word myofascial release. So yeah. he is the creator of this whole system or this type of movement or type of treatment, I should say, the hands-on treatment that I do called myofascial release. And he is the guy that says, okay, your fascia goes through your whole body. So the fascia that goes over your shoulder is also the same fascia that's going over your psoas and going over your intestines. And so maybe it's something you're eating that has something to do with this, not just the Thanks. fact that your hip you know, and I didn't learn any of that in school. And again, as I start talking about nutrition and I start talking about emotions and like, you know, fight or flight response and people like being stuck in that, like if you're that person, it makes sense to you. If you're not that person, I'm not having that conversation with you, right? And so, sometimes it could even be a process where that person's in process, meaning Pilates showed up three times for you. And then you finally got like curious, like, hmm, why is this showing up so much? Your name showed up three times for me. And I was like, hmm, why is this guy's name showing up so much? Like, maybe I should like get curious. So it's like, it's where, I, where you are and where you can like absorb it. And it's not about us, right? Sometimes really. people want change and then you explain the change of what you're going to do in their haircut. And they're like, well, that really freaks me out. And it doesn't work. I totally get it. It's sometimes not about me. 100%. And that's been the fun journey is the, yeah. the kind of letting my life, letting the things happen in my life and not getting all too upset about it, but reacting. It just yeah. like right now, like this whole COVID, like this sucks. I mean, like I can't work the way I normally work. But I'm, I'm just staying positive and I'm continuing to reach out to my clients. 
Uh, last week I had 12 uh, telehealth visits where, you know, it, I'm not making the kind of money I would normally make, but no. I'm, I'm able to. It's I'm not able paying to... the bills right now, but I get it. The yeah. color kits that we're making, it's not about color and it's not about doing their roots. It's about a little bit of normalcy, right? right. And it's That's about right. relationship for both of us. Like That's for me, it's just relationship. That's exactly right. <clears throat> Cheryl just popped in to say hi. <laughs> hi, Cheryl. <laughs> she's already off, but I think she's probably about to teach class, but I'm not sure. Love but, it. Uh, yeah, and that's kind of why we got along so well. At one point, when you started talking about opening your business, I became really excited about it, and I became the guy that was trying to, like, tell you on the side of, po of positive reinforcements. Cause I knew you were going to get all the Bobos in your life telling you don't do it. You can't do this. You know, you're going to get that from your closest people in your world. And it's natural. And it's, and it's once you real, once you realize it and you're like, okay, I'll just stop talking about it to those people. Everything's good. But yeah. when you talked about it to me, I was like, I was nothing but do it, do it, do it, do it, totally. but not doing it in a way, not, not being in a way of like trying to like rush you, but like saying, this is my experience and this is why I did it. This is why Cheryl and I did it. And I looked forward to you coming in at that time, every time we worked on the table, because you were trying to make decisions, business decisions. And I wasn't trying to influence you. I was just trying to totally. be a sounding board. No, you were a huge support and it was so great. And I really, it was, I appreciate it so much. And that's to me as fun as treating patients and it's having that relationship that like, a lot of my patients that I do work with now, they're the movers and shakers in this town. Mm -hmm. They're not the people, they're not the people that are sitting on their butt working for somebody milking the clock. You know, yeah. I get a few, I get a few milk clock milkers, but most of the people I get are movers and shakers and they own their own business. They own their own whatever. And they're out doing really cool things. So the relationships that I've built in my room that like, to, like I can't put a value on that because these are people that have done so many wonderful things in this community whether it's as a business owner, whether it's as a, as a, um, you know, someone that, that like, I met the guys that run Chewy's, like, you know, that started uh, Chewy's. I love it. They're like the nicest guys I've ever met. And they're so sincere and they're, they've been so successful. You know, Chewy's has grown from one to over a hundred locations. Yeah. I and, think they're national now they're pretty incredible. Yeah. They're totally national. And that's yeah. where like, to me, having those relationships with those people, where I can text that guy and say, hey, can I reach out to your lawyer? I'm trying to figure out a way to have someone buy into my business. Is it, can I talk? I know you've done this franchising and sold. And can, can you help me out? Yeah, here you go. To reach out to this person. Let them know I'll I, I send them to you. you know? And those things are just so valuable. And that's why my hour with people in here, it's, mm -hmm. it's more than just their physical being and their, their health. It's, it's like it's listening to what's going on. And you needed you didn't really need me to help you with anything. You just needed the support, like you said, but you being able to say what you needed to say and knowing that I wasn't going to judge you, but just give you my feedback, my honest feedback. And I told you my pitfalls. I told you the things that we yeah. struggled with. I told you the things that I wish I could have done different. Those were some of the best conversations in the very beginning, seriously. Yeah. yeah. And that's what's fun. And again, that's why I, I, I love working with my clients because I get to know them at that level but I love talking business and, and business is business. And it doesn't matter if you're a hairdresser or a PT or what you're selling, what you're making, producing it's business is business. And I was taught as a PT that like, we didn't have to do business the way other people did business. We were special. We were in the medical business. People are just going to show up to work with us because if you can help people, they'll show up. That's wrong. You yeah. got to do more than that. And totally. to be honest with you, the best thing that's happened to me was stepping away from insurance. And when I stepped away from insurance, I really had to learn how to do, run a business in a different way because when I took insurance, people just came in because I took their insurance. Well, I right. was getting I was getting the wrong fits then. I was getting people and injuries that I was weren't in my wheelhouse. Now mm -hmm. people are paying out of pocket to see me. I only get the people that are really need what I do, and it's a well, scenario. Let's be honest. Yeah. When you are contributing your own resource financially to something. You're buying into it. That's right. right. You are making an active choice. People often, I think, there's a mentality that if something's given away, it's less valuable. 
And then if you have to come up with something to purchase it, it's more valuable, right? Because mm -hmm. you are actively making a decision to buy into it. That's right. right? That's right. I, to I, I relate to that 100%. And when people were just using their insurance and it was costing them, you know, back in the day, it only cost them 25 bucks a visit. Then eventually it became 100 bucks a visit for copays because it just got out of control. Right. But back in the day when someone was paying 20 bucks a visit, the thought of them paying out of pocket wasn't, they were like, no way, I'll just pay 20 bucks a visit. But guess what? Those people didn't do as well as the people that were paying 100 bucks a visit. That must have been a really intense switch for you guys. It was. It was. It was a rough year. Um, so it would you say tough. it took a year to kind of turn the wheel? It, it took about, I would say about six to eight months. And I, I made the decision um, election year. Uh, 2016 and Jan January, I made the decision in 2015 about November, uh, October to, to switch. In January 1, I switched. And there were a couple reasons I switched that time. One, I'd already lost my job because of the signature of a president. What, what was about to go down between Trump and, and Clinton, I'm like, whatever goes down by November and whatever happens next year with changing this or changing that. Right. I gotta, Too I much gotta, not in your control based I, on something no, I had zero control. So I said, right. I'm going to, I'm going to set my, I got a year to figure this out and I might go broke doing it. And I might go right back to taking insurance, but I got till the election to figure out because whoever wins, it is not going to affect my ability to make a living for my family now. Because back when I was 25 and I lost that you job, that. it didn't matter as much as it did now. Right. It yeah. would have But you also already felt it in different forms because you had a job, it was taken away, that was based on something else. These were all things that were impacting you based on other people's decisions that you had no control over. That's right, that's right. Mm -hmm. So when I went cash January 1 of 2016, that first week was pretty good because people really didn't understand the shift. And come January 1, most people are paying deductibles anyway, so they're right. paying out of pocket till they meet right. the deductible anyway. Well, what had happened in 2015, if, if you were a small business, you couldn't get a PPO anymore. So if you were a lawyer, if you were a real estate agent and you worked by yourself, you made, and you could make a, bu a bunch of money, but you still couldn't get a group plan. So all of a sudden I was seeing that less and less people were actually having the type of insurance that I, I took. I only took PPOs and everyone was being forced into HMO. And so I'm going, well, I'm not taking HMOs and I'm not going to do this shift. So I'm going to just go cash and figure it out. First week went good. Second week went, whoa, everyone figured out they were paying out of pocket. And by the end of February, those first two months, it was like, it was slow. And I saw about 50 people, 55 people the month of February. And I needed to be seeing about 80 to 90. Whole month. And, whoa. Uh -huh. For just, just me for PT, not any other. Right. No, I get time. it. But I know how your book is usually. And exactly. So, so oh. <laughs> that was, that was scary. So all of a sudden, February, March, and April were rough because we were building this new business. Even though we'd been in business for 10 years, people knew me, people trusted me. They, they still were like, well, I got to pay how much per session? Um, and what happened is by about June or July, it started rolling. Uh, I started learning a lot more about systems. I started learning about lead generation marketing. I started doing blogs. I started putting myself out there in a way that I had done a little, but not very much. Yeah. And before you know it, things were, things were right. You know, my original goal was to see 20 to 25 people a week. Well, by about July, I was seeing 25 by August, October, I was seeing 30 by the end of the year, I was seeing 35 people a week to where I needed, I needed help. You know, I didn't even cool. think I need help. You know, what's so good about that. I, so to me, from an outsider's perspective, it's more of an energetic component, right? You had to make a hard decision because oh, yeah. the direction you were going wasn't resonating for you. That's right. And one thing that I'm really learning in year nine or 10 of the salon is that if it doesn't resonate for me, it's probably not going to resonate, period, in the company, right? right? And everybody can say it's a salon, but it's still a company. I'm an LLC, I function as an LLC, and we have to come up with system and process and brand and be on point, mission, vision, the whole nine yards. But what I'm starting to get at 49 years of age 
that I feel like you made the rough decision to go a direction that resonated more for you, no matter how scary it was. And as a result, you got more referral and word of mouth because it was more in the resonation, right? It's like that energetic component, even though you weren't sure how it was going to play out. That's right. I love that. And everyone told me, no one's going to pay cash when they got insurance. My family told me that. Cheryl was was scared. You know, all my colleagues were scared. But I know a few PTs that, that, that are only cash. And I just said, I'm going to stop talking to everyone else. And I'm going to talk to them only. I'm going to read their books. I'm going to read their resources. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do what I need to do to make this work. And then once I jumped in, by the time February rolled around, then I hired a business coach. And hiring a business coach was someone who worked in Europe where he's competing with free health care. And he's got a cash PT clinic in Europe where people people are paying cash instead of waiting two months to get in to go to the NHS. So I'm going, well, if he's competing with free, (laughs) he's doing it and he can figure it out. And I'm going to let him teach me. Yeah. And he taught me his systems and taught me the things. And so I've been applying that stuff for for years now. And that's the stuff that we continue to apply, which has allowed us to continue to, to grow and bring in more people and bring in more staff. So, so it's been a real fun thing, but that was a hard year in January. Like we, we didn't, you know, we couldn't travel that year. Like you know, there was no spring break that year. The kids are like, Hey, can we go skiing? I'm like, nah, man, we can like go to San Antonio for the night, you know, and, uh, oh, kids and we're going to drive. <laughs> yeah. So we, we, we made some really hard decisions and we knew it would, would take some time to, to make it right. But I could no longer work in the capacity that I was working and I could no longer work holistically in the medical system that had been created and the way it had evolved. So for me to keep doing my thing and allow people to find the resonation that we do and the, the, the relationships, I had to step away and it's worked out great. You know, again, it was a rough year and I, there were times in that year when I was at the grocery store and I had $50 of groceries and I try this credit card and I try that credit card and that credit card. And I'm like, all right guys, I'll see y'all tomorrow. I'll come get it tomorrow. And like that had never happened to me in my entire like life ever and that was kind of you know that was weird but at the same time it's those moments in time that really motivate you and allow you to like work your butt off to get to where you can it gives you this appreciation for when it is working and you start to see like okay we've been somewhere else and like we're so much better now and like we're just going to keep on this path like it helps give you the power to keep going a little bit right that's right that's right And from all the adjustments and stuff we've done over the years, here we are with COVID-19 making the same adjustments. You know, is it, is it ideal right now? No, but this is affecting the whole world. Every time I've had trouble in my life, it's been because my industry has been affected by government. Well, this is the whole world, not just my industry. So like, this is totally different, but I feel like because of what I learned in 2016 to present, what I learned when I lost my job in 98 and what I learned from opening my job, my business in 2001 originally is that whatever happens moving forward, like I can only control what I can control. So I'm in the same place. I can only control what I can control. So I can sit around and be mopey and miserable and like wait for the government or someone to like bail me out or I can work my butt off right now. I may not be able to pay my bills for a few months the way I normally would, but I'm going to work my butt off now. And on the back end of this, the people that I've been engaged with, the people that I've done telehealth with, the people that I've been talking to, they're, they're, they're going to remember the people that were reaching out to them. They're going to remember the people that showed an effort and took some time to still build that relationship when that person wasn't coming in to see me. So I'm not happy about what's going on, but I'm also optimistic that when this is done, we're going to have new revenue streams. We're going to have new online services that we didn't have before that are just going to be able to continue. Um, And who knows what it's going to look like on the back end. But I know this, that if I sit around and wait and wait for someone else to do it, it doesn't happen. And so it's up to me to figure out, and, and we're just going to keep plugging and make it work. I'm not going to let this shut us down. Um, it might shut us down temporarily, but it, it has shut us down temporarily, but it's not going to let us shut it down. Today is our 15 year anniversary from the day. We oh, were happy on. anniversary. That's awesome. I love it. Day 415. So I'll never forget that date. So 415 of 2005 was the day we opened up here. Okay. And I just can't believe it's been 15 years and it's just beyond wild. So I love but, it. 
But that's See, my story. I have to tell you, I think your story is so genius. And I really, I feel that learning through other people, whether you're a business owner or you're on your own path of evolving or you're in pain and you're trying to get on a path of healing, like it, it's all parallel, right? And I have to say that I think you guys are so unique and I'm so grateful for you all. And I love you sharing all of this information. I know that we're gonna put a little offer on the end of this for yeah. anybody that wants to come and meet you guys. Yeah. Um, and then I really just want to say thank you for your time. And I love learning from you and you're totally inspiring. And I'm so grateful for our relationship. And I think you and Cheryl are just incredible. Well, thanks so much for the kind words. And what we know is when someone like you refers everyone in your world to us, your mother, your sister, your partner, everyone that, that you know, your clients, that you send people to us. I tell physical therapists all the time, Make a relationship with a hairstylist and <laughs> really get to know them and take care of them and treat them well. Because like, I don't want referrals from doc. I mean, I shouldn't say that. I won't refer from doctors, but the referrals I get from you, They're the different. People, it's different. They're already like, they already understand because you've already, you've already broken down any of their objections. Yeah. You've, you've done all the hard work for me. I now just need to like show them what I do. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's what's really good. fun. That, my, I, I had an interview with a guy earlier today, a guy, Ray, and uh, he's up in Pennsylvania. And I told the story of me and you and Cheryl's relationship one night at a dinner. And I said, man, you got to think out of the box when you're trying to network and market. You're like, don't think about doctors that are like getting bombarded with every PT in town, bringing them donuts. Like, yeah. you know, think about something different. And when I told that story about you, he's like, oh my gosh, that is brilliant. And I said, you know, we did, it wasn't like, I didn't think of that. She showed up, we became friends before you know it, they're trading. And we have this fantastic, like decade long relationship. I mean, like I didn't set out to look for her to find that, but when she showed up in my world and we created that relationship, then we found a way to continue to. Totally. Fall. You know. but really, let's be honest, it was because I had had this long history of pain cycle. And for anybody that touches or scratches or breaks that outside of a pill for yeah, me, right. it was huge. And right. coming from New York for so long, I, what I try to instill in our stylists that are young and upcoming, it is about the relationship. What are you going to bring to the table besides just the technical? Technical is very important, but ultimately it's what, who are you? How good are you going to be with this person? You want to bond to that client in every aspect of their world, not just their hair. That's right educate right. them educate them on what they need to take home what their routine is who's best in your world what books you're reading restaurants pop culture the city around you traveling life that's what makes the experience rich yeah i want to know their kids names i want to know totally. their, you know their, their jobs i want to know where they're traveling why they're traveling um totally. where, where they're eating um, where are they hanging out on Facebook? I, I ask questions of my clients, like, what, what Facebook groups do you hang out in? What things like that? Hey, Love Cheryl. You. I'm talking to Janet. <laughs> my pretty side here. Hi. Uh -huh. Yeah, we That's just wrapped class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You, 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 you Did you start? send her a class already? No. Okay, you need to send her some classes. Okay. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. You, you can take it. Yeah, you can take it. Did y'all do your interview? Yeah, we're just wrapping up. Okay. Cheryl's coming in to take my light, so. Oh, He's love it. It's gonna be it's gonna be a little uh, darker, but that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. You're just as beautiful. Don't worry. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, Stephen, I can't say thanks enough. I hope you guys really have a great few weeks. I know it's a challenging time. Um, I feel like sharing story during this time is what's going to help other people and create deeper relationship for all of us. And I just feel grateful and I can't say thanks enough. Well, I'm glad to be here and I'm glad uh, we have the relationship we have for so long and Thanks, I'm glad you trust us. I'm, it, it makes me uh, I'm very proud that you trust us again with your whole family, so not, not just you, but your whole family and your whole yeah. crew. And, and it, we know we're doing the right thing. And, and that's what's important because there's, it's easy to do business the wrong way and it's hard to do it the right way. And when you do it the right way, I think people really truly feel it and they feel the authenticity of it. And, 
And I think that's one of the main things is if you can be authentic and, and be real and just know, like I'm comfortable in my skin and I'm comfortable in my business and therefore it makes everything a lot easier and not so like caught up into this like world of like worrying about these little details and those little details. Uh, I don't worry nearly as much as Cheryl does. And I guess that makes us a good team, right? She, <laughs> a little yang, it helps a little yang. <laughs> that's exactly right. So, but it's been a really fun process and, and, and I'm grateful I started my business many years ago. I'm grateful I was willing to go from a contractor to my own brick and mortar and then go from insurance to non-insurance. Yeah. And now we were forced to go virtually with, you know, without choosing to, we were forced to do it and we've done it. And, and it's been a fun little transition. And here we are it's keeping me busy. It's keeping me my mind busy during this time. Cause if I was just sitting at home watching my kids on, on T, uh, zoom school, that'd be rough. Yeah. So, You'd be like, get me out of here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like I love exactly. them, but I can't do this. <laughs> exactly well i just wish you guys the best and i can't wait to get back into the office and see you all again and take some classes and see you and i'm so grateful thank you so much you're so welcome and i know cheryl's ready to get in to to get some work yeah. in her hair <laughs> Everybody wants to get a little hair help <laughs> that's, right. that's exactly right well thanks a lot i really appreciate yeah. it uh, we'll care. talk soon all right bye janet bye steven <laughs>